everyone, I'm Andrea Kirk with the channel The Art Chick. Welcome back. I am so excited for this next project. I purchased a tall, skinny, vertical canvas. It's a 24 by 36, and it's a Master's Touch Fine Art Studio Classic Collection canvas. It's not very expensive, but it's really good to work on. And I've decided that we will be painting a snowy owl. And I found some gorgeous photos online that I want to use as reference photos. And I love how this one, the owl is perched on a tree branch. I've done a painting similar to this with the raven. So I wanted to change things up a bit. And I found another photo with the owl's wings open. And as you can see, he's about to take flight. And I love the warm glow in this photo. And so by combining the two photos, we can do the owl taking off from the perch with his wings open, and then it really complements this size of canvas. And then I also found a close-up of a snowy owl's face so that I have the detail for the eyes and the feathers. So this will be a really fun project. I will have a complete list of supplies in my description under my video feed. and. That will help you gather all of your supplies. And I'm really excited to start this project, and I hope you are too, so let's get started. All right, there's nothing like a blank canvas. <laughs> We're going to start with a Prismacolor pencil, and this particular color is terracotta, and I really like it because it doesn't show through the paint. And so I always use this or a sienna brown or something in that color range so that you never get the gray and the charcoal in your paint from a regular pencil. And then this is just an art gum eraser. You can see that I've already used half of it, but you can find these at any art store. We are going to start with an owl that has his wings up in the air. And the easiest thing to do is to mark where those wings end. And so the tallest point for this wing is over here. And so we, we know that that's where that one will end up. And then over here, obviously he has feathers that are spread, but this feather right here is about right here. Okay, so we know that that's where his wings need to end up. The body itself, that's going to be a little bit trickier because we are going to draw a perch. And so personally, I think that we should draw the owl first and then do the perch. So let's get this one again. And I think I'm going to raise him up to about right here. And this is where that perch will be, the top of the perch. And we don't want him smack dab in the center. So we're just shifting his feet a little bit right here. Now, to get the shapes of the owl itself, we want to use basic shapes. So. In this case, we are going to do his head first. And I want you to just loosen up your arm. Don't feel like you need to be tight and perfect. It's actually better if you just loosen it up and go around and around. So see how loose that is? You can see multiple lines. That's totally fine, especially in the drawing process because you can go back and erase. But from here, we need to figure out where the rest of his body goes. And so his neck is on a bit of an angle. And so I'm drawing a line here to show where his neck is. And then his body, what it does is from the head, we have a part that comes down and it's rounded, but it comes down and meets up with that line, okay? So it's almost like a half circle. 
Okay, and then we're going to meet up with that line. And then this will extend down to here. Okay, and then his back is actually about right here. Obviously the wing is going to come down and cover some of that, but we're going to go ahead and draw the back in. And if it helps, you can turn that into a rectangular shape like this. When I've taught my students in the past, if I teach them with basic shapes, it's so much easier. So you have kind of an oval here. It's not a perfect circle. And then you see the big rectangle. We have a half a circle here. And there's a little triangle there if that helps too, and a triangle here. So you can actually see an X. And from there, we want to bring the tail out. And honestly, you can make that another triangle like this. See how that helps? <laughs> it's so much easier to draw if you just use those basic shapes. And then the tail from there, it tapers down. So if we just draw a line that guides us down, and I might adjust the perch a little bit. We might need to come down a little more, and that's fine. You don't have to have everything perfectly in place. You can move things around. But here we have that line, and then we can even make this come down a little bit more like that. Just give his body a little more length and then you can round this area like this. And see how you're seeing the shapes here. In this photo, uh, I love the tail feathers so we'll continue with those. So you have this one right here. Okay, and then we have one that sticks out just a little bit, right here, and it goes straight in. And then we have one that's right in the middle that's more triangular, like this. And then we have a bigger one at the bottom that's really fuzzy that does that. I'm not going to do the two feet. I'm just going to do one. And that's because when they're perched like this, you're going to see a little more balance. And so we're actually going to use this foot here and then we can use the coloring in the other one. But from this point, the owl's foot will come down. We have to keep the same angle from the other photo. But it's going to come down and then from here, We'll add the feet. And so it's going to have a look like this. And then if you want, you can actually show a little bit of the other foot right here. If you want the claws to really stand out, you can make it fuzzy down along there. And then we have a toe here. Okay, so there's a toe. We have another toe right here that connects like this. And so we can erase this line right there. And then we have a claw here and you have another claw right here. And then when we paint, we'll make sure that that looks really nice and fuzzy. And for the perch, because we want to get that done, let's have that come down on an angle. I actually like how that isn't straight. It adds an interesting shape to the tree branch. And it gives you interesting negative space as well. Okay, And then this particular part of the branch is broken. And that will go down like that. And then you kind of do a jagged, almost like a lightning bolt, right there. Okay, so that makes it really interesting, but now we need to work on those wings. So I'm going to zoom out again so that you can see that. And then after we get the wings, then we can add all the detail on the face and on the feathers. 
As you can see, the wings come up behind the head. And so this one, we're going to start here, and then the other one will start about right here. And they have a very interesting shape. So this one comes out like this, and then it goes back about right here. And again, you can see that my point kind of changed to over here, and that's totally fine. We can move things around. Don't feel like once you've put that mark up there, it's over. Um, no, you can move things around according to how everything else went. Uh, in comparison to the body, I mean, these wings are huge, and so we have to really capture that. So here's the point here. And then from there, we're just going to do the shape before we do the detail of the feathers. I just want the shape in there. So it's going to come down like this. And then it's going to taper and meet up with the other wing. Okay, and for now it's going to look a little bit awkward until we actually go in and detail everything. Okay, now this one right here is going to be on a slight angle. Again, I'm scribbling. I want you to scribble. It's good for you. This one bends right here. Okay, so we have a mega curve. And I'm going to move that point too. I think I want to go right about here. So I'm going to go back. If you need a ruler, that's fine. Don't feel like you have to freehand everything like I do, but you can get out a ruler if you need to. Okay, and then I'm doing the same thing, so that's my point. That's my highest point. And then my other feather will go about right here, and I'll meet up with that line, like this. And then from here, again, we can do the outside shape. It's really full out here, and then it comes back in to this spot right here, and then it gets skinny again. And it curves around, so we have a little bit of a dip right there in the wing where it gets narrow in here, and then it comes back out right there and ends up like that. I actually might widen that a tiny bit. I don't want it to be too crazy, but I do want to come out a little bit more right here. That's what your eraser is for. If you see that it came in too far like I did, just take your eraser and erase that extra line like this. And there you have the outline, the basic outline of your owl. Now I want you to step back and take a look at it and make sure that everything is how you want it. I still might come out a little bit more right here. When I stood back I noticed that his face needs to be a little more oval and so we are going to take his head, and actually, right here, we're going to make him a little bit fatter, so like this, and then I want his head to come out more like this, and then the same thing over here, because what happens is he kind of flattens out up here, and then he comes out about right there and his head meets up with his knee. And then the wing itself comes down like this and then meets up with the body. That really helps and then also the base of his 
face, and his head is right here. And then he kind of has a little bit of a double chin right here, or extra fold on his neck, I guess. And so at this point, you will just erase these extra lines so that you can see the one that you want to use more clearly. And then another thing I want to do is I want to make him a little more fat right here. We'll go in and erase this part right here. And just keep going, keep erasing. <laughs> we can get rid of this stuff too. You don't have to have that X in there anymore. And what's nice is you start to erase, you can actually see the owl coming to life because look, we can get rid of this line. Just make sure you clean up your canvas as you go. You can erase that line. He actually is starting to look like an owl. Same thing over here. Just go back in there and fix where you erased. So notice how I just go through and I make minor adjustments. They don't have to be big changes, but they do really help to make the owl look more proportional and to be the shape that you want. To get the detail of the feathers, we have to count the feathers and make sure that we do all of them. I wanna show this line right here where the feathers come out of and it looks like it starts in this spot and then it goes down it follows the wing the shape of the wing and then it comes down right here and then goes to the very edge right there like that and from here we can start to connect those feathers. So we have this one that turns like this. Okay, and then we have there's kind of two parts of the feathers actually. There's two layers and we need to draw those in. But basically Let's get the outer ones done first and then we can do the inner. So the outer ones, just to get them spaced out properly, kind of follow my lead. But we have one, two, and then three comes down like this. And then we have four, it comes down about right there. And you'll go in like that. Okay, you can start to see that they're stacking on each other. And then five is down further right here and it has more of a point. And then it goes down like this. And then we have six that you just barely see that point right there. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then from here, it just scallops. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And I hope that helped. So there's a big gap between these and then here you just have the little scalloped edge. And this is where it gets a little bit trickier because we have the shadow of these wings right inside of there. And so this is where we have to do lines up from this area. I'm gonna have this come down 
and meet up right here. And then up here comes down to a point like that. We can actually bring that one down a little more. And then you do another one here. And then come down. And do you see the extra layer that's starting to happen? So bring this around and line it up. And then meet up with this one. So notice that pattern. It's almost like a diamond shape. Well, kind of a triangular shape. Here it's a diamond and then here it turns more into kind of a triangular shape. But what we do is where this rounded edge is, we take the pencil and at that point, you draw a line down like this, and then come out, and then down. And then here it changes direction, and at this point, you're just doing kind of a triangular pattern right here, and then it fades. Now this is not a straight line either. It wouldn't look natural if we left that. And so for that, we just have to erase that straight line and we're going to do a jagged edge to look more natural. So here, you want to just come down and make it very uneven and then it just meets up right there. You can see that I really came up far right here. That's because the shadow did that. Once you've done the drawing for that, you can go in and erase this original line that we used as the contour line to outline the outside of those feathers. Okay, so you'll just eliminate that so it's out of there completely. See how beautiful that is? It's really starting to come together. These feathers over here are a little bit sharper, but they're easier. And so on this one, the top feather splits right here, and you have a line that comes down, and it disappears right there. And then we have a straight line right here. Okay. And I want to draw in the second part of the wing. This is where the feathers change color. Okay, so we have this line that comes up, and then you have this one on the edge, like that. All right, from here, this is where you will kind of turn up as you go. So, I want you to think of boomerangs and how they're shaped, or maybe a stretched out banana. That's kind of what you're doing right here. But we want to show an edge with each one. So that's a feather here. Then we want to come down right here. We're going to do another feather, go straight down. And then we have one that comes out like this, and then goes down. And then one here, and then at this point you do the scallop, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and this one comes out a little bit further, nine, ten, and then right here we will bring this feather down like that. And each
each one is going to come down and meet up with this line. So you can see I'm just drawing a curve. And it straightens out when you get to that point. So you have kind of a fanned look right there. I am not going to go in and draw all of these dots because when we go to paint, we want the solid color underneath and then we can add the pattern on top with the paint. If you try and do this pattern along with the colors underneath, it's going to be much more difficult than if you just do the base color first and then go back over with the dark spots. Does that make sense? So we're going to wait for that. Once we draw the owl's face and do a few details down here, then um, I will show you how to shade properly so that as we're painting, the shading comes naturally. And then we will worry about those spots later. Let's begin the face right now. <laughs> now, an owl's face is actually really easy. It's kind of funny. Um, there's not much to do. <laughs> uh, one thing though is you want to show the forehead. So they do have a distinct look to them. And if you draw a line like a forehead like this, it will help you capture that look. And then the eyes themselves on this particular owl, he has a feathery area right here and right here. And we want to show the beak coming down. So notice how this is just a really skinny rectangle at first, and then at the very end, he will come to a sharp hook. Okay, so it's going to go like this. And then around it, he'll have feathers, obviously, but that gives you at least the structure of the beak underneath, and then we can, after we painted the beak, then we can feather or paint the feathers over it. And for the eyes, the eyes are going to be slightly above that beak. So I want you to come down on an angle here, and then we will have a slight angle over here and if it helps, you can actually take a line and pretend like you're drawing a line around his head, like the actual owl's head like this. Okay, and that will help you line up your eyes. And so these eyes, they flatten out right here, but then they round to here. And then They come down on a slight angle like this. And that's just how owls are. They almost look mean. And so it's because of this line right here. That angle of their eye just gives them that really distinct look. And then on this side, we want... So he's actually kind of looking this direction. So this pupil over here will be staring this way. So you aren't going to see the entire eye like you do here. It's going to be on an angle. And so we want to capture that angle. And to do that, you start with the top of the eye like this. And then you are going to round like this. And then you can go in and draw the pupil on both sides. And then just draw the curved line right above like that. And then when we go to paint, we can really soften that area. So if you have to take your eraser and fix that, you can. It's not hard to do. And 
And then the other thing that will really make those eyes stand out is what I like to call the eyeliner, <laughs> the black on the outside of the owl's eye. Okay, now we can go in there and erase that line that I drew to line up the eyes. One other thing I noticed is that right above the eye right here, there's a line. And then if you want to mark where the spots start, you can actually just outline that little spot, that area on top of his head. And that's where you'll see some of the, the spots start on the top of his head there. So now we need to separate the areas so that we get the lines in the right places. So we have a pattern up here of lines and if you want, like you can do a basic mark of where those will go, just so that you know the angle. So I'm just doing some horizontal lines that show that. We will paint over them a little bit, but at least that tells you where the different shadows will go. And then here we have another tiny area that has some spots, so I'm marking that. And then another area is right here. And I'm going to come down. So that will be a solid color. And then this is where the speckling begins. One other thing that will help us is if we do the lines that show where those spots will be placed. And so I'm just doing lines in here that will help us place those because there is a pattern involved. And actually we have one area that I didn't see until now that goes across like that, which is part of the wing. And in there, the lines change. And so we erase those right there. Now on the outside, this is where we start to see those lines. And then down here, it's very, very little. You have markings, you don't have very much right there. Not very much up here. I mean, honestly, this owl to paint is not going to be too tricky, other than the lighting up in here will be somewhat tricky, but you've got me, so it's not gonna be that bad. So right here, we might need to break up where the scallops are. We wanna show some lines, so these will go back kind of like this, where you'll see just a hint of a line when we paint. And then along that scallop line or that edge, there is an edge right here that is going to be super bright. And so I'm just going to go up along here and show that that will be highlighted. Okay, so that will make it easier for you to paint your shadows. And then, ooh, something else I didn't see. Hey, there's actually an area where there's another layer of feathers right here. And so we've gotta make sure that we include that. It's very faint, but it will look super pretty when we paint if we include these. And there's actually one, this is crazy, but it sticks up right here and it's actually pretty big. And then there's a smaller one here, smaller one there. And then inside of that even, there's a triangle here. And then this meets up with those. So there's just a little bit of a fluff in that area that you need to make sure you include. Down here, before the pattern begins, there is a white area right here. Okay, up here, there is another line that separates like that. It's looking pretty, I'm excited. Oh, right here, gotta get this part. 
That's his chest. It's a poofy little chest. And then we want to show where the break off is, where the black lines start. And add some shadows to our wood. And not a lot. I mean, this just shows some of the texture, but when you go to paint, that's so easy to do. And we can actually do that abstractly with the paintbrush. And the cool thing is too, when we go to paint the branch, we're going to let it dry a couple of days and then we're going to come back and add some snow, which will be super pretty, just right on top of the branch. I want to show some variation back here when we paint it because it will be abstract, but I want some color. And I do love this line up here. I think that that is really pretty because it ties warmth with the cool tones. And so I still want to include that. So you just kind of drop down like that. What we will do is we'll have it fade. So we'll add some of those warm tones up there, get back down into the cool tones. There, there will be warm tones in the owl. And then this is going to fade to look like that at the bottom. You never want to copy picture exactly. So if you have a reference photo that you're looking off of, please combine it with other photos and make it your own. You don't want to copy someone else's image and make it look just like theirs. So I think we're pretty close. The feet, I mean there really isn't much to do there other than we can have a little shadow in between. Like this and then underneath and then on the edge it's going to be bright white so I just want to add a little bit of an edge for those feathers so that you can see that white There is a line that comes down right here. This line right here is going to separate the patterning of the feathers with these feathers over here that are just solid. You can bring this feather out a little bit more. I do want you to do a little bit of shading to show some of the lights and darks. So I'm going to darken those lines. So that obviously is a dark area back in there. It gets lighter and lighter as you go up. And then even this area, that's not going to be white. It will have kind of a blue shade to it. And then these feathers if you could go in and just draw a line on each tip, that will show where the white edge will be. It'll make it easier when you go to paint. So there's an entire white edge right along there. A giant one here and a giant one here. And in this area, If you go in and shade these, that will help you see them better when you go to paint. So we shaded that area just to make these feathers stand out from the feathers back behind. And that will make it easier when you go to paint. And we have that white edge down here. This edge right here will be darker so we can shade along there. That will help you to know what to do when we get to that point. And then obviously up here we have the white line above, but down below we can definitely show where that gets dark. And then just 
do a little bit of a shadow on the side of his face. If it helps you, you can also shade above each one of those. We can get started on this right away. Now that we've done that, go ahead and stand back and look at your piece and make sure it looks good to you. Make sure it's in proportion. Those are some crazy long wings, but that's how those owls are. So I love, love this size. It will look so pretty when we get this done. Be sure to take your eraser and then anything outside of the owl, any smudges, just get rid of those. Make sure it's nice and clean and ready. And then also on your canvas, just make sure you get rid of every fleck of eraser that you can. You don't want that showing up in the paint. So make sure your surface is nice and clean. Now it's time to start painting. And so I have here all the colors that we'll be using for the eyes, and then also we'll be using some of them in the background. But I really wanted to get started on the face of the owl. You can see that in this close-up we have highlights of the bird and some deep shadows up here under the eyebrows. And I really wanted to enhance the eyes by printing off a picture that showed a close-up. and that will make our owl look so much more realistic. So let's go over the supplies that you need. I have my cleaning tank here, and just keep in mind that I will have everything listed in the description below my video. But this cleaning tank is super important. It has the coils inside that help to clean off your brushes and then I use what's called terpenoid natural and this is good because it's non-toxic, it's non-flammable and it's just a safer way to clean your brushes and to not hurt the environment. And then you'll just fill your tank with that. And my tank, <laughs> I've done so many paintings with this so it's not pretty but when you get yours it should look brand new and nice. As far as palette knives go. Again, this one's very well used. You're not a true artist if you don't have dry paint all over everything. <laughs> so if you get to that point, then good job. The brand of this palette knife is Reeves, and it's the perfect shape. I really like this size and shape, and so that's a good one. Let's go over the colors. So right here we have what's called Naples Yellow. This is Titanium White. This is cadmium yellow pale. This is flesh yellow, pale pink, cadmium barium orange, raw sienna, burnt sienna, alizarin crimson, ivory black, and this is actually burnt umber. And then we have permanent green light, and this is cerulean blue, and this is dioxazine purple. And I actually turned off my camera to add liquid you will want liquid for sure because it makes your paint slippery and it makes it move across the surface better of your canvas. And I also like that it will help your paint dry more quickly. And this one is Windsor and Newton and I've used it for years, so I highly recommend. All right, so as you can see in the eyes, we have some light yellows and then it turns to gold and then we have some browns up in here and then black. And then there's a lot of reflection in here that's gray and blue, a hint of purple. And then strangely, there's a little bit of green right along here. And if you add all of those colors, it will make your owl look far more realistic. Now our eyes won't be this big, they'll be smaller, 
but we can just do a smaller version of this. So I will guide you through the process. For the light yellow, I want you to take titanium white and let's just come over here. We'll keep all of our lights in one place and then take that Naples yellow and mix the two together and see how pretty that creamy color is. And then I don't like to waste paint and so I'll just take that excess paint and I'll wipe it off on my palette and then take the cadmium yellow pill and we're going to mix those two together and just take some titanium white to add to that so that it's a little bit lighter. We can add a little more titanium white. I still want it to be slightly brighter. So you have two shades there and then if you come over here wipe off that paint and then we want to add the flesh yellow and see how it begins to turn orange but it's not too dark. So we're getting slightly darker as we go and then wipe your paint on your palette and then you're going to add some pale pink and then some cadmium barium orange and then mix those three colors together and to tone that down I want to add burnt sienna so you'll add burnt sienna and then you can even I have to wipe that off so I can get to the titanium white add some white and that will make it look more creamy and then we want a brown color and so we'll wipe off the excess paint there and then go ahead and dip into the burnt umber and the alizarin crimson and then mix those two together and it wouldn't hurt to add some more of that cadmium barium orange to deepen the color see how beautiful that is it's kind of a rusty color and then we want to get darker than that and so wipe off your color and then add black and that's the ivory black and so we have a really dark chocolate brown and this time you're going to wipe off your paint on the paper towel and we need to mix that green that I was showing you. So just dip your palette knife into the permanent green and then come over here and you'll need to mix the cadmium yellow with it and then also some Naples yellow and then a lot of white. And what you get is a really light green color but it's very warm it's not cool but very refreshing looking and then we need our blue highlight so dip your palette knife in the cerulean blue and then come over here swipe it and then take your white Mix those two together. And then swipe over here. I want you to take that dioxazine purple and add that in as well. Now that purple is super bold. And so to tone it down, you need to add some black. So add some ivory black and then after you've done that, it darkens it, but then if you add some white, you get a really nice purple gray color, and that's what we're shooting for. See that? And then the black around the eyes that looks like eyeliner, 
I actually recommend taking all of that ivory black, not all of it, but taking a lot of it, and get a tiny hint of alizarin crimson, mix that in, and then that way your paint won't look so flat. When you're painting the black, it's always nice to mix a deeper color with it. One more color, let's do a gray. We don't want just a purple gray, we want a regular gray. So take black and titanium white, and I had a little bit of purple on there, but that's okay. <laughs> and some white. And I don't want this to be a cool gray, and so I'm going to add some burnt umber to it, like this. And look how that warmed up that gray. So we have some beautiful shades here to work with. And I'm going to give you a little hint as you are working. When you apply the paint, just take a tiny hint of the liquid and add it to your swatch as you're painting and then that way you're not getting too much or too little it's just a little bit with each swatch you'll want to flip over your paper towel I just kind of turn mine inward but that way I'm getting double use of my paper towel you can see that I used two halves let's begin painting I'm excited okay to start with I'm going to use this round brush it's a low Cornell and it's a 2037 round and the size is 10 slash 0. I think this is one of my older brushes but I really like the tip it's just nice and tiny and with this one I want to paint inside of the eye where it's the lightest and we actually can start with that light green and so I'm just going to dip my brush into that light, light green, and then also the liquid, like I explained. And I want to go around the pupil. And I want to finish one eye before we start the other. But after you've done that with the light green, I want you to take that really light, creamy yellow, the lightest yellow that we mixed, and again, dip it in the liquid. And I just wipe my brush off in between. I wiped it off on the paper towel. You don't necessarily have to clean it in the cleaning tank when you're using two light colors. So I'm just painting right along here and mixing that cream color into that green. It is super crucial that you use a tiny brush. Next, I'm going to use the medium yellow, so we have multiple shades of yellow. We have the really light one that we just did, and then the next one up from that is what I'm going to add here. And so you paint that around this entire area. And then wipe your brush and then I want you to take that green and pull it into the yellow so that you don't have a defined line. And then for the fun part, I want you to take the next shade of yellow that's darker, so that golden shade, and you will paint up here. And then also down in this area and then you just keep getting darker and darker. So then what's the next darker shade from that? You have that really pretty orangey brown color, not the rest, the rest one is darker. But this one right here. And I want you to pull that all the way across like this. And then above that, we will use the rust color.
And you'll pull that one all the way down as well. Okay, now right now he's looking mean, but what we want to do is to blend the colors. And so just take your brush and go in between where the line is and the golden yellowy orange and see how I smoothed that area. You want a smooth transition. You never want to see a line in there. You want it to be a gradual change and that's the difference between something that looks animated and something that actually looks real. So keep that in mind. You can even pull down on that darker color to bring it down further. And what's nice is that it just automatically blends into that lighter yellow. But can you already see how that's adding depth to your eye? If you just did straight yellow, it wouldn't look real. You have to have all these other colors. When we add the black, all of that will stand out even better. But before we do, I want you to take that dark chocolate brown and I want you to come on the inside of the eye like this and paint all along here. So go up above and then even down below. And then I took some more yellow on my brush just to keep that rounded right here. If you get too much dark on the yellow, make sure you paint more yellow over that. And then before we start the black out here, let's do the pupil. I want to take that black that we mixed with the alizarin crimson. But here's the catch. We have to leave an arrowhead shape, so maybe a sideways triangle in here for the highlight. And so I want you to paint that in like that. And then around that, you will do the pupil. Now the pupil is very round, so make sure you're actually painting a circle because if you don't, then it will look weird. And don't, don't rush it because you'll just get frustrated with yourself. And see, I'm working it over to get the perfect roundness. It takes a few tries. And then rinse your brush. And I want to let you in on another trick. If you take that straight cerulean blue, and I wouldn't use liquid this time, but just take that blue and I want you to go around the black. You just go back and forth between all your colors if you feel like one is fading, just get more pigment on your brush and add it in there. And then I want you to clean off your brush, just wipe it on the paper towel, and take that light blue and go in and paint that little triangle very carefully. And you can come over here on the pupil you can add a couple of specks over in there that are just really light. Make sure your shape stays nice. Taking more green on this side to soften around that eye. Oh, I love this part. This is where you take the black, dip some liquid in it, and we are going to really enhance around his eye. I 
Now over here, we will be painting some feathers over the black, but I, I think it's good to start with the black outline and then we'll paint the feathers over that. Look how pretty that is. It has a lot of depth to it. I love the gradient from the lighter yellow to the darker yellow. And another thing you can do that would be super pretty is to take that green that you have and mix it with some burnt sienna. And I want you to go up in here and just add some of that color up inside. And it's not the green that we mix. I want you to take that permanent green, mix some burnt sienna into it. So I'm just taking my little brush, mixing the two together, and then coming up here and adding some additional color. And then if it gets too dark, you just take that golden color and go over it a little bit. This will create even more depth in your owl's eye. So you just play with it until you feel that you have enough color in there. That's what I do. I just play with it until I'm satisfied. It's kind of fun. Now I'm adding more deep orange. And then as this dries right here, we can actually add a white highlight in that area. I'm going to darken up here with the black again. And then you can even take that brown and just add some more warmth up in here along with your green. So another thing I'm doing right here is I have some leftover green on my brush and I'm pulling it down into this area because it gives some variation in the yellow. Because if you look at eyes, they do have lines in them. And so I just took that and went in and added some color and it really enhanced the eye. And then I'm still going to get a little more orange up in here because I just think it needs it. I want you to take that rusty brown mixed with some of the lighter orange and just go along the top of that black line. And there's your beautiful eye. I'm going to put this one on time lapse because we already did that one and just follow the same rules. Obviously the head is turned and so you're going to see a different angle of that eye. To paint the beak, I want you to switch brushes. This is an AIT Art Russian Sable shader and it's a size two. And to do the beak, it's actually going to be quite easy. You will take black, mix it with your liquid, and I want you to paint along the edges, just not the center. So go on the outside on both sides and just paint straight up. And then wipe your brush and then that dark charcoal gray color that we mixed I want you to add that shade right next to the black and then in the middle take that light blue that we mixed and go right up the middle with your brush and then at the bottom the beak actually lightens up, 
but it has a hint of orange. And so I want you to dip your brush into the medium orange as well as the purple. And I want you to paint the bottom. Just follow the shape from the drawing. And nothing is totally definite because we still have to go in and paint feathers over the beak and so it's not going to stay just like this. I want to enhance that highlight in the middle a little bit more so I added some more blue. And then if that orange didn't show up very well, just add a little bit more. And then the black outline right under here. You can even take some titanium white if you want to make that even brighter right in here. And so this part is going to be super easy. We need a lot of titanium white and we will also need some blues. And so we have a good blue mixed up and then we also have that gray color. And I'm going to show you really quickly how to apply some heavy white on here. And then as it dries, we can bring the feathers over the beak. This part gets me really excited because you're actually starting the white of the owl. And the speckles that will be on top of his head, we are going to wait until the white dries to add that. So I want you to look at something in the photo here. Notice how the bright whites are out here. And so you can't do anything in here that would be as bright as that. Does that make sense? And so we have to really tone down the white on his body. And we already did that with the blue that we mixed. And so I want you to add some more titanium white to that blue. And so I'm just taking my, my palette knife and doing that really quick. So just remember titanium white to the blue that we already mixed. And the reason why we're doing this is so that we have a lot of paint and it will lighten it up just enough that it's dark for uh, the contrast that I showed you. And you can also add a hint of black to it. Just don't add too much. Okay, so once you've done that, we are going to use a brush that I like. This one is an Ebony Splendor 383 Bright Creative Mark brush, and it's a size 10, and it's a square brush. And then the other one is a Master's Touch size 6. It's a 5000 Filbert. And I'm going to start with the bigger one so that I can add big clumps of paint. And I want you to dip your brush into the liquid and then into that bluish white that I had you mix. And you're just going to go in here and apply liberally. Now we don't want it to all be blue. We want some areas that have a little bit lighter of a shade. And that's where the purple can actually come into play. If you mix more white with your purple, you can actually get some good contrasting shades. So you can see that I use the blue one up here and then the purple down here. And it's funny because you're probably thinking, but it's a white owl. Why are we adding, you know, it's a white snowy owl. Why are we adding all of these colors, the blues? Again, it's all about that contrast. On the bird, we want the feathers to stand out that are in the sunlight. And so we have to really pay attention to what's going on there. Here I'm adding some straight titanium white and then I'll blend it back into the blues. But I'm just going above the eyes and enhancing the eyebrows. And then I want you to blend up in here. See how you get a nice gradual fade. So I did white here, white here, and you can actually go back and forth between those two brushes. You will need to. So in the areas like above this eye, that's where I take the smaller brush 
to do my titanium white. And I'm just going to take that and go up above his eye. And then I'm going to also take that white and go across here. Like this. You see how pretty that is? And you can take the white also up in here, so the titanium white, and then just pull the blue up into it. And that's where we'll add all of the speckling. And there's also some shadows right along here, underneath his eyebrow. So you want to be sure to add that. And then that titanium white around the head really, really looks nice. It gives it a roundness. You can see that it's lighter up here and then darker right in there. And then take that big brush again. And I want you to dip into the purplish white and then continue painting along here. And then also on this side. So the other cool thing is that the snow back in here is kind of a pinkish color, a light pinkish yellow color. And by doing this edge that's a little bit darker with the paints that we mixed, you're going to have a really pretty contrast. I got my gray and I darken that area on this right side a little bit more with that. And I would show you each time that I dip my brush in the paint, but it's absolutely impossible um, where I'm trying to hold the photo and paint and teach. <laughs> so I'm trying to explain it the best that I can. But all of your colors are on your palette. We did those together and you just pay close attention to those. Okay, so they kind of have a mustache right along here. And so take that brush with the titanium white and paint the mustache on both sides. So this way you're going to go left, the other side you go right. And then you want to do white all the way around. You can even pull this darker color down on top of here. Okay, and then there's a dark shadow under here. It's not super dark, but Take that gray and just go along underneath there. That helps to define the owl's face. And then you can even do a shadow down along here. And I'm going to give you a mega secret. And I want you to pay close attention. Along with the blues, if we mix some pinks in there, this is going to look absolutely amazing. So I am going to show you my paints for just a minute. Okay, you can see that I'm getting kind of sloppy, but that's okay. That happens as you're going. But I want you to take titanium white and this shade right here that we mixed, mix the two together. You're probably going to need a lot of white to make this happen. So I want you to look at this warm, pinky shade. It's actually kind of a light peach color. And I want you to add the pale pink as well in there. And if we add that on the owl, that is really going to enhance the coloring. Now to apply that, if we add 
that color right under here. Make sure you add liquid and then also over in here and then down along here as well and up in here and probably a little bit over in here. That's just going to give your owl a lot of depth. Okay, and in between we can add the light blue. You guys see how beautiful that is? I want you to take your smaller brush and underneath the eyes, we're going to mix that pinky color as well as the blue color. I want you to come right underneath like this. Maybe a little more of the blue. Okay, and that blue is going to carry across along here and mix some white in there as well. Okay, and then the blue wraps around here as well. And then everything in between can be lighter. So right here, I want to get light again. Really enhance that mustache, make it stand out. So on both sides, stroke to your left on that side and then stroke to your right on this side. I want you to blend that together. And this is just our base color. We are actually going to go in and really enhance things when, when this base color is dry. I'm adding more white up in here just to really make that area stand out. With your teeny tiny brush, this is the AIT Art Russian Sable Shader, the size two. This one I actually want you to go around the eyes and soften everything. And so I just took some titanium white and I'm going to go around. because so I just don't want these harsh lines when we begin to detail with the feathers. I want those to disappear. So between titanium white and the light blue, you can kind of work between both of them. I just want you to take that brush and just go around right up against that dark line and just soften. And that's going to make a huge difference as we do come back and paint those feathers. So I'm graying down the line around the eyes. And right here, I do want it to be light, so I'm adding white. And then do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so you can see that we have a lot of colors for our base colors. And then as this dries, we are going to paint some feathers in front of the beak and also down along the eye on this side and then also this side and also we will be able to do the speckling right here.
If necessary, you can go back with your ivory black and fill in the areas that were covered by the white. Above the eyes, you can add that charcoal gray color that we mixed. Also, you can use the one that has a little bit of purple in it and just use that to stroke around the eyes to give it texture. To make the feathers above the eyes look fluffier, I would suggest adding some titanium white and just do a few strokes with your paintbrush over the gray. And now with your AIT brush that's a little bit shorter and stubbier, I want you to take that titanium white and do some really thick, heavy strokes all over the forehead and then around the eyes as well. Again, using your fine tip brush, I want you to take ivory black and you can even mix a little bit of alizarin crimson or purple with it. And I want you to go back over underneath the gray and just redefine some of those lines around the eye. And be sure to do it on both sides. And notice how it looks like eyelashes that are kind of turned downward instead of upward. Now for the fun part, I want you to take titanium white on your fine tip brush and watch where I dab the reflection on the eyes. You'll want to go over the pupil area as well as the cornea and look how that makes the eyes look super reflective. It's beautiful. Now take that charcoal gray again and add a few more lines of texture for the feathers above the eyes. Using that light purplish gray color, I want you to do a shadow on both sides of the beak to enhance the mustache on the owl. And so notice how I'm doing strokes that look like a half circle. Do that on both sides. I wanna take white and the feathers in this area are also really thick like they are up in there and so you're going to take those feathers and go down over the shadow like this, like a mustache. And I'm just going downward, but then I'm going in a triangular form like that. And you'll do it on both sides. Make sure you have plenty of liquid on your brush as you work. And then underneath, you will also have an area with a lot of white. In this area, the feathers will go upward like this. And we could actually add some more purple right up along the beak right here because I do want to really enhance that triangular form on both sides of the beak. And when you have plenty of white, it's a lot easier to keep working. So just keep adding that in there. The texture is really important. If you don't have texture on your bird, it's just not going to have that realistic effect. And so just make sure you go in and really emphasize the feathers.
Now I want to do the spots up here and I want you to take that chocolate brown and the liquid. And I actually left the white on my brush, but I'm just going to go up in here and because I left the white on my brush, it will actually blend better. But I just want to go in and do several dashes with my paintbrush. Make sure you use a squared off brush like this one because it will do a better job. So some will be brown and then some will be black. And so if you go between the two, see how that adds a little bit of a contrast when you do some darker than others. And then just wipe your brush in between. Over here, he has a pretty big spot. So I want to emphasize that. You can also dip your brush into that charcoal gray color and do some with that. And if you want, you can blend some of them together up at the top so that you get an overall gray effect. But just make sure that liquid is always on your brush or you get that yucky canvas texture. If it looks too speckly, again, just take your brush and go in and blend them together. You can also take some of that rust brown color and go up in here and add more warmth to it. I also want to take this light blue that we mixed and go back over the top right here. Just to show the edge of the top of his head. Make sure that's still very prominent. So it's up to you. You just go in and add those spots until you're satisfied with how it looks. And if you feel like your owl is looking too outlined with the dark, again, just take that light blue and go back over the top. Make sure that that top area is accentuated, that you can see it really well. You don't want him to look like he's wearing a wig. So to avoid that, just make sure that highlight up there really stands out. It does, it takes a minute to work things over, so don't feel like you have to rush. Never ever rush when you're painting with oils. It's not like acrylics where it will dry the second you apply, and so you have time to work over things, which is why I choose oils over acrylics. Sometimes if I'm in the mood, I'll use acrylics, but I really like the results of oils even more. wouldn't hurt either to take that golden color and just add a hint of that coloring up in here because there is sunlight in the painting and if you can show any type of reflection it can actually really add to your piece. See how pretty that little detail is? And then I want to add some more feathers over in here. Now that you've done that, we need to take a 
bigger brush. And this one is my Ebony Splendor size 10 by Bright Creative Mark. And it's a 383. To make the head stand out more right here, I wanna get the dark shadows back behind. And so I'm going to take that rust brown that we mixed and some Liquin, and then also some of the purple gray. So rust brown, purple gray, Liquin, and you can even add a tiny bit of white to it. And what it will do is it's going to give you a golden gray color. And when you apply that, you can see warmth in there. See how you can see that orange glow? And so we're going to take the brush and paint right along here. And look at the contrast with that. It's a really, really pretty contrast. And you will go about that high, and I want you to keep it in a triangular form. like that. And then from there, I want you to wipe off your brush. You don't necessarily have to clean it, but just wipe it off. And then that really pretty tangerine orange that we mixed, you're going to take that and go up inside of here and add that color. And then take some titanium white and you're going to pull that color into the titanium white. And what you're doing is you're creating light on these feathers. So what's interesting is that white is never just white. If there's a white animal or white snow, it's colors around the animal that reflect onto it that give it all of that beautiful coloring. Okay, so here I dip my brush into that beautiful skin color that we mixed. It's that peachy color. And you can see it on here as I paint it clearly. So just look down at your palette and you'll see exactly what color that is. But we're just getting a beautiful base color that we can work with. And use your liquid and make sure that you're blending as you go. And then also with that, you will be adding some blues. And so take your lightest blue that we mixed and you're going to start adding that over in here. And trust me, all of these colors together look absolutely beautiful. And I like to use fan brushes and this is a Winsor & Newton Monarch fan brush and it's a size six. And once you get your colors in there, you gently go back and forth in an X pattern. And you don't want to overdo it. You just lightly go over that area to blend it. And then once you've done that, I want you to deepen the color down in here. So I took my rust, my dark rust color, or the chocolate brown and rust mixed together. And I added that right here. And then over here in this area, I want you to clean your brush off and you're going to get more of that light blue that we mixed, the lightest blue. And you're going to paint, <laughs> so mine's really gloppy because I got a lot of liquid on there so that it would spread. show you just so that this tutorial doesn't take ages what I've done here. So we started to paint the blue after we did all of the golden colors and the deep orange in here and after I did that to experiment I wanted to see how well these markings worked on the wet paint and they actually go on really well and so if you want to continue with me notice how I went in rows and you can see that it's kind of a rainbow pattern and you just take that 
chocolate brown or that charcoal gray and alternate between the two colors. And you'll just go across the wing doing little rainbow-like shapes like this and see how they're in rows. And so you want to continue that all the way up. Yeah, sometimes these tutorials can get really long and if I can just briefly show you what I did and then explain it, then we can get through it a little bit faster. But see how pretty that is. And you can even give a tell to some of those, kind of a swoop. And another thing, if they're looking too dull, if it blends into the paint below too much, you can just take more of that black and go over a portion of that rainbow and darken. Let's see how each row is just right above the other. Up here you can do fewer lines because then it kind of fades into just wing color. You have some markings up here, but not near as much. But take a good look at mine, at my markings, and just do a similar pattern. And one other thing that's super crucial, if you dip your brush into that tangerine orange, in the areas where, maybe up in here, where the sun is coming through, it actually would look really good if you added some of that tangerine orange at the end of your marks because then it's showing the light. Then blend those if you need to with your brush. And I'm just using that squared off brush. And then down here, you can do a few little markings. You don't need a lot. And I would use the charcoal gray down there because those are cooler tones, and it seems to cool off down in this area. It's not as warm. Over in here, the markings do fade a little more because there's more light coming in, and so these I've done lighter. And then over here, you'll do a dark chocolate brown spot and then do a little tell at the end. And there's a few of those. See, I just turn my brush. And then a few more right in here. And then right here, they kind of jumble together, the markings, there's not really much of a pattern but you can add a couple of spots where they get darker like this and then get that tangerine color and don't be afraid to go in again and just add some orange get more color in there I want you to take that flesh tone orange color and go back underneath these because you don't want them to look like paint. <laughs> you actually have to make them look like real markings. Just to soften things so that it doesn't look super harsh and unrealistic. And so that orange, because there's orange underneath, if you just take that and then go under each of those markings and gently blend. It's going to look more natural and not so fake. I want you to take that square brush, that ebony splendor, and dip it in that golden yellow that we did and just come in and enhance 
this area a little bit. You can even use that to soften underneath your markings. You can go over the tops just gently with this brush and it will just help to soften things. Because again, if it's too harsh, it's just not going to look real. And so you have to just tone things down a little bit. And that golden yellow will fade as you go up. See that? And then you can take that blue and do the same thing. You can get that deeper purple blue and go up here and add some more color up in that area. Just make sure that your paintbrush is cleaned off. You don't want to mix your yellows and blues. But yeah, anywhere that you can go in and just enhance with a deeper version of that color, it will really add to your owl. On the very edge, you can take this Master's Touch Filbert. It's a size six. And just lighten that edge all the way up. And then we can enhance that even more as we let the paint dry. So we'll let that dry and then we're going to do another color right here that reflects. And that will be really, really pretty. But for now, just go in and blend things together, smooth them out, make everything flow. do some darker ones up here and then also up in here. Just really smooth out those lines. So what I want to do to make this more simple for you is I'm going to show you how to paint a couple of these feathers and then I'll time lapse it so that you can do the rest. There's going to be two different types. These right here will be shorter and they're not going to have quite as much yellow as the ones up in here. And so I'll show you how to do maybe a couple of those and then one of those. But take this brush, this is a round brush, it's the Master's Touch Filbert size six and dip it in that liquid and then in the white and then I want you to paint the very edge of each of those. Remember how we drew in that extra line on each of these? That was so that we can have a bright white outer edge of the feather and it will make the feather look like it's translucent. Let's start with the light purple blue that we mixed. And I want you to take that. What's crazy is it looks darker on the canvas than it does on the palette. And so you will swipe your brush, get a little bit of color on there, and then I want you to take pure titanium white after that. And you're going to apply that right here and then pull upward into that color and that will automatically lighten that feather. And look how pretty that is. And then the other trick is you do not want to see a harsh line between the white and the blue. And so that's where you take your fine tip brush. And I love these AIT Russian Sable round brushes. This is a size zero. And just dip it in a little bit of that liquid 
and then I want you to take your paintbrush and then gently glide right in between the two colors and they blend beautifully together. And then what will be cool is that when you paint the outside, the background, that white will really, really stand out. If you feel like it, you can even get a little more white on there. Just make sure that your lines are nice and smooth so that you don't have any dried textured spots for when we go to do the background. Okay, so we have a nice transition there. And then as it gets closer to the inside of the wing right here, you will do a lighter blue. So the lightest blue that you have on your palette, it's one that has the most white in it. And I just painted right along there but then you need to clean your brush off and we're still using that round brush. I want you to dip your brush into that peachy flesh color that's on your palette and you're going to paint that right along here like this. You can even get that really light yellow and apply that right here. We just want to show that light shining through the wings and the feathers. Okay, and right here I'm blending it together. So I took some titanium white on my brush. I put it right here and I want you to dip into that alizarin and crimson because we actually need some pink in our feathers and so I want to do two different shades. So there's that one. And then right here, I'm going to wipe my brush off. I'm going to get a big chunk of titanium white in that one to make it lighter. Maybe even a little bit more. And there you have two shades of pink. So I'm going to use those in the feathers as well. And I am going to take that pink that we just mixed and I want to show a hint of that over in this area. I am all about adding color. And then we can blend just gently everything together. See how beautiful that is? I still might get more of that bright yellow and go right along here with that. See how pretty that is? In between the two, to make them stand out, I'm going to get that same light purple and we want to paint a line right along here that gives it contrast. Wipe your brush off. And then one other cool thing that you can do is take that light yellow and right along here just to make that feathers stand out more. You can do what's called reflected light. And I'm just brightening right up against that edge to make it pop. And then it separates the two feathers. Now that I've done that, I'm going to take that same light yellow on my filbert brush. I'm going to paint it right along here. And notice the contrast of the yellow against the blue. And I'm being very careful not to mix, over mix the blue and the yellow because you don't want that green. But see how I blended the two? And then you will fade that into the light blue. So right here on the feather, I'm changing to that light blue color. Yeah. 
And then as I'm working, I can see here that I need a little more blue on that. And so this is something that I do all the time. I'll be working on one spot and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna add a little more color in that area. And that's actually good to do on your paintings. Sometimes as you're working, you just don't see what you're missing, sometimes until the very next day. So it's good to go back and add those things when you notice them. I'm also going to add some of that peach color right here. That yellow is slightly too strong for me today. It wasn't yesterday, but today I'm thinking, ah, let's lighten that up a tiny bit. And then the other thing that will add contrast along that wing that I'm noticing is that we need more of a gray shadow right along here. And then that gray shadow can fade into the blue. And see how that makes those stand out better? Okay, I just added some blue there and then I'll do some white. I love how you can take that titanium white and add it over a color and then it just really brightens things up. I'm going to take that light blue and just get slightly brighter right here to make it look even more translucent. One other thing, we didn't do the white right here. So just take that titanium white and we're going to brighten everything. Same colors underneath, but just slightly brighter. I'm actually going to go ahead and paint right here. I want to see the contrast between the background and the white edges, so you guys get to take a little break from feathers to do that. And we have the perfect color already mixed up. Actually, it's two colors. And I'm going to bring my camera down. This one and this one, maybe a little bit of this blue. And then, of course, we will use the titanium white. And another thing is you want to have the right brush. And I actually do have a really good brush. And this is a 1.5 flat brush. I want you to take that filbert brush and dip it into that light purplish blue with liquid and I want you to gently go around each one of these. Okay, I will put this on time lapse otherwise it just gets tedious to watch. But basically you're making that white edge stand out and so just take this and go all up along the wings of that owl and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, now that you've done that, take this brush, dip it in that same color and make sure you have the liquid on it. Go back and forth right along here. 
And then I want you to get that deeper blue that's right next to that swatch and add a hint of that in there too. And it's actually good to have the streaking going on horizontally because then it just shows variation in the sky colors. It makes it look more wintry. But I'm going to time lapse that, but what I want you to do is as you come down, start getting lighter with your blues. You can even mix a little bit of that light purple in there and that will give it some variation. Are you guys beginning to get a glimpse of how pretty this is going to be in the end? Adding that blue really makes that look magical. Um, I do want you to take that same fan brush that we used earlier, the Winsor Newton size, six and this is a monarch fan once again and i want you to do that x pattern in here look how pretty that is oh my gosh <laughs> and then along here we actually need to take our filbert brush and just use that to soften I'm going to finish these feathers and I'll put it on time lapse now that you know how to do the layering and the white edges and then we'll go from there.
All right, and there you have a beautiful wing. And I want to start this wing over here, but before I do, I actually might just add the background up in this area because I feel that as we fill that in, the picture is going to become more complete. And where this is wet anyway, we'll just finish getting this side wet and then we can move over here and use this space. So, and actually this, is, this has dried quite a bit. So let's do it. Let's do the background here and up there and then we'll move forward on that wing. And what we'll do over here and then up above, just so that you know, because I'm going to put it on time lapse. We have all of these colors that we're going to be using back here in the background on the palette. And so here we're going to do the blues and then we will carry those across here. But then we're going to start adding hints of the pink and some yellows and same thing up here. Where this is mostly dry, we can really get some of our cream colors up here. We just have to be really careful along this area that we don't mix the yellow too much. So we could do maybe a gray in between. But just follow my lead and use your bigger paintbrush. I'm going to be using this one. That's the one that we used earlier. And remember just to do your back and forth strokes and everything should go really well. And also use liquid. So now that we have all of that beautiful background done, I actually think I do want to finish it over on this side as well before starting this wing. So what I plan to do is to paint this side over here and then as that's drying, we can get started on this part of the wing up in there and then um, we'll just keep moving downward toward the body and then obviously the background down here and the post. Follow along with me and we'll get this area done. Now that we've done a lot of the background, I want to show you how to do these feathers in here. So I will demonstrate one of these and then one of these, and then I will put it on time lapse as I finish all of this area. And then over here is going to be quite similar to what we did with the blues over in this area. So the paints that we mixed up on the paint palette, they remain the same. And so as long as you are keeping those swatches nice and fresh and thick, then you can continue using those same colors. So nothing will change there. We'll be using all of these exact same colors that we used previously. So watch what I do here and we're really going to start progressing into the body next. So it should be really fun. Once again, I'm going to start with this Master's Touch Filbert 5000 and it's a size six. I want to make the tips of these feathers really bright and actually down below along the side right here. So we want to use straight white. So get your titanium white and also your liquid and start painting along there. And you want to come all the way down to that line. From there, I want you to take your pale yellow that we mixed and I want you to start adding that right along here and follow the shape of the feather that we drew and then make sure that they mesh together so you want them to blend and you can do that by just taking your paintbrush in between the two lines and moving downward. And then I want to do the light flesh color right along here and notice how I'm leaving that white line visible. You don't want to cover that up and continue with the flesh pink and then at the top 
we are going to get slightly darker and so I want you to use your light pink that we mixed. And then come down right along there. And make sure your paint is thick enough. You don't want to see the canvas coming through. So I'm just going back and forth between the pink and the flesh color and blending the two together and then just have it go right into the yellow like that. And then you can take the good old fan brush that I absolutely love. I use it all the time and then just use that to gently blend and don't do it too harshly. Next I'm going to use this brush. Again, the name is worn off, but you can see the size of the bristles just by looking at it next to my fingers. It is a finer tip brush, but I like it for smaller areas. And I want you to dip it into that periwinkle purple color that we mixed the blue with. And I want you to go right down along the side of that feather, all the way down to here. Like that and then I noticed that over here we have another strip of yellow that comes down right along the outside and I like it because it's reflective light and so it just helps to make that feather look somewhat translucent And take the background colors and if you feel like you got too much paint on your feather just go in with those same colors and round that feather to maintain its beautiful shape and then make sure you blend it back here so you can't tell that it was messed with I want you to take bright white and paint right along the purple So take that white and paint all down along the bottom of that feather. And then take that light yellow, mix it with that flesh color, do the two together, and then just gently take your brush and paint right down along that feather. Paint that light pink color on the other side and just help to straighten that feather back there because all I had was choppy paint. And then you can even go over that line a couple of times to smooth it like that. And then take your periwinkle color again and pull it up into here. Okay, and then take light yellow and come down right along here. After you've done that, you will want to add the markings, the spots up here and you know what colors we've used before, we're going to use those again. But on the tip right here, there's more of an orangey brown. And so just take that mustard yellow color that we have on the palette. You can mark those two areas. And then we want the gray color as well. And so I'm going to take the gray and paint right along here. And then here. And then down here. And then let me show you what to do here really quick and then I can put it on time lapse. 
So in that spot, it will be darker. And so I want to take that periwinkle color. I love it, it's such a beautiful color. And I want you to outline right here. It's actually going to meet up with this shadow over here. Like this. And then you can pull that purple all the way down to this area. And then take the blue, the light blue, and I want you to paint inside of here with that beautiful blue color. And then take a light pink mixed with your flesh pink and come inside this area. And you can even take a hint of yellow. You wanna get as many colors in here as we can. Just don't paint that yellow right next to the blue. We're going to keep a separation between the two. But then in between the two colors, you can do that periwinkle right here. And then you can even take white to be that barrier so that you don't get green. <laughs> you do not want green. No to green. But what you're trying to do is just get as many colors in here as you can so that it really reflects the colors in the background environment that this owl is in. And so the more that you can capture those colors, the more realistic it's going to be with its environment. Now the purple, we have to blend in a little bit better so that we don't see a perfect outline. And so I'm going to pull those lines inward like this. So that's what you do. You can see the beautiful contrast. And one last thing before I put it on time-lapse, make sure that this other side over here is also being watched. You want to make sure that that edge is also really pretty and blended. I'm just taking white right along this edge just to brighten up that spot. So I'm going to put this on time lapse now and you'll start to see this unfold really fast. And just remember all the techniques that I taught you, all the colors that I taught you, over here again, we're just going to be doing those blues and whites and purples and enjoy. What I want you to do is just take your brush and you're just gently going to add some color like that. And this is that really pretty orangey pink. It's almost a tangerine color. But then we need to take the periwinkle, the bluish purple, and blend the two together. And if you want to make that periwinkle lighter, just add some white. And so here I have a lighter version. I'm just taking my brush and gently going over those colors. So 
So you have just a hint of that pink in there now. And then on top of that, I wanna take the lighter blue and I want to highlight right along here. And so just do a diagonal line that goes up like this and have it come all the way down to this lighter area. And you can blend it on both sides. And then I want to add some of that down here too. And so now I'm going to take that light blue and at the base of that color that we just added, I'm going to take this and just drop it down. And can you see what's starting to happen? We're starting to get some more dimension in the wing and it's adding more color and therefore looking more realistic. We can add some of that light peach and light yellow. And again, don't get carried away, just add enough that you have that reflected light that gives it warmth. And then up here we can add some more pink as well. And I want it to be the lightest pink. And so get that on your brush and just pull that color down into here. And then I also want to take that same pink and enhance at the base of these feathers. So you'll take it and go upward. Okay, so now we can work down in this area. So dip your paintbrush in the liquid and then the titanium white. And again, we're going to take that white and add it to the outer edge of the wing. Now that you've done that, let's add the yellow. And so same thing, dip your brush in the liquid and then take your lighter yellow and then paint right along the inside of that white. Okay, and then have that fade into your peachy pink. So then we're going to pull that color inward and get darker and darker with that glow. And then right here, we need to add some more purple. And so clean the yellow off of your brush because you don't want to mix it with the purple and make it look green. And so you can take the blue, the light blue and that periwinkle color and then go in here and start applying that. You can even do a grayed down color, and so I have my gray. When you mix that gray with blue, it's actually really pretty. And so we can do some of that in here as well. And then add pink towards the bottom. And then it wouldn't hurt to add pink down in here too. If you bounce around with those colors, it changes the lighting. And so you get areas that light up more than others. And so it's good to have some of the warmth over here and then shadows and then warmth up here. We can add a hint of orange over here. Down here, we will start adding the bluish gray again. And then we have to make sure that we accentuate these feathers. And to do that, you would do the shadow in between each one. 
and then this would be lighter. I'll put that on time lapse and just watch how I shade in this dark area and then I brighten in these areas and then to make these down here stand out I'll just do a faint shadow here and here. Notice how I shaded right here in between the head and the wing. And then over here, before I get started on this, I'd actually like to do some of the background color in this area so that we can really make the tail feather stand out. And so you're just going to do a few more streaks of that periwinkle color and some light blue. And then we won't mess with this area until the very end because I want to be able to work in this space. So let's go ahead and do this and then I'll give you some instruction for over here. As you can see, I brought down the blue to this point and I have a surprise. Down here we are actually going to do something really cool. And so I'm just leaving this as is for now and then as soon as we get the owl done, I will show you what will happen in that area. And then we also need to blur the edges along his wing right here. And so I want you to take the white and just go along and just blur the edge along here. And we can actually let it dry longer and then come back over again. You just don't want to see any harsh texture underneath. All right, so now we need to go in here and lighten the outer edge of these feathers right here. And so once again, you're going to take the light yellow and white and light blue and just work your way around. The goal is to make the owl look like there's light shining through it and so we want to really emphasize the beauty of that. I'm going to put it on time lapse because it's such an easy thing to do but just follow my lead. All of these feathers on the tail will have a highlight of white or yellow or that light blue and so just follow and watch which colors I use and where. It will give a lot of dimension to this area because this area will be in a shadow of blues like this and so to have the contrast with the blue and the yellow and the orange, um, orange and blue are complementary colors so that's what will make this painting look so beautiful is that contrast of light and dark. Now that we've done the outside of these feathers over here on the tail, we can start to apply the same blues and periwinkles and pinks. It's all the same throughout the whole process. You're just basically repeating the same technique where you do the base color of the blues and you contrast that against the yellows and then after you've done that then you can start to add the markings. So because we've done all of this and we've done all of that and I've explained the process, I'm going to start the blues in here and because you know what to do now you can just follow my lead. Then we can start the beautiful markings that come around his chest and belly. So let's keep going. let this dry over the weekend and so it's been drying for you know a couple of days and now we can do all of these lines that are on the belly and the chest of the owl and they are going to be a little bit lighter than some of these 
and we're going to work in the same pattern that you can see we did right here on the stomach. You can see how I did these half circles or rainbow shapes. We will follow that same pattern as we do our lines on there. I'm so excited to see how this is going to turn out in the end. It's looking absolutely beautiful. Okay, so now that you've done that, I want you to take some of these other colors on the palette, so the periwinkle and some grays and some white, and I want you to go in and add shadows on the other side of these in this area in the neck. You can see I added some here and maybe a little bit more right here. And then you can also take a light blue and wherever you have added these lines, if you go in and just add some texture in between, to thicken up the paint and also it helps the lines to blend in so that it looks a little more natural and not quite so textured. Just use that time to clean up this area and it should look amazing when you get done. We are going to finish this area on the right side of the owl and then also his feet and his talons. And then I have a really cool surprise for down here. You guys can continue this color down um, like I've been doing and stick with the blues and the purples or I'm going to do a beautiful contrasting sunset down here that really pulls the color from the owl's eyes. Right here we need to start bringing the blue over. We are using the 1.5 inch Master's Touch flat brush and this is just good for big areas. And I've got some liquid on my brush and because I want to use a lot of paint I'm putting that on first right here. And then I want to dip into my lighter blue that we've mixed and I'm going to bring that across. And then with that, just dip the corner of your brush in titanium white and the two together look really pretty. Make sure you have a lot of coverage with your paint. You don't want it to be too thin. And I also don't want to do too much blue and so I am also going to combine that peach color that we mixed. You want to use white, pale pink, you can even do the flesh yellow that we put on our palette and you can mix those together. You can even add a hint of lizard and crimson. But just work that into your blue. It's nice to have a little warmth. And we can get a normal pink color, so that would be a lizard and crimson, white, maybe a little bit of yellow ochre, and mix those together. You'll get a little bit more of a pink than a peach. And then I want to get titanium white, and down here, I'm going to keep things pretty light because I really want those feet to stand out. And then again, to tie that in, just bring another strip of blue right along here. And you can even pull a tiny bit of that peach that's still on your brush. Just add a hint of that in here, not a lot.
and take that blue and go back and forth horizontally. And now we can start to work on the feet. Okay, down in here, I'm going to lighten right up against his foot and against his belly. And this brush is the 5000 Filbert, the Master's Touch, size six. And so I'm just using a light yellow and a white. I'm going to get really light right up against his feet. And I'll pull that color to the right. I want you to take your gray and run it right up along here on the right side of the one foot. And then take light blue. But again, we're going to mix titanium white. Just to lighten that up a little bit. And then I want it to have a golden effect. And so I'm going to take my yellow and peach and I just want to add some color up in here. And so make sure that gray continues over and then pull it up into that blue and into the yellow. And then up here, I might actually pull that gray all the way up to the bottom of his belly right here. And then you want to shade underneath. So right along here, just push that brush. It still has all the color on it. And you can just push that in to the canvas. And then do some little strokes to blend it into the rest of the foot. You can even take that light blue and fluff over that shadow. See how I'm just swirling my brush and it's making things look fluffy. And then just like we did up here with the white, you can see how I took the white and swirled and it actually made it look like fluffy feathers. You can take that white and do the same thing just come down here and, and don't do it everywhere, but just take that texture in the lighter areas and just add a few highlights. There's even some pink very subtly back in here. Add some light yellow down along here where the toe goes. And then I want to get a gold tone down in this shadow right here with the gray. But I'm going to mix white into that as well so it's not too harsh. And then take that gray, darken that area again. Okay, and then I want to take peach and still enhance right here. Just a little bit more and some darker pink right here. Take your white and the texture on top of that. And you can start to see the contrast between the two. We can lighten the edge of that foot with the white. And then take your fine tip brush and this is where you are going to dip your brush into your blackish brown. And the talon is very sharp. So 
So we start up here around the top. So it rounds right here. Make sure you have liquid on your paintbrush. And then you're just going to curve downward. This one back here, same thing, around the top. And then come down to a sharp point. And then I want you to take your rust color and at the very top, you're going to paint around that rounded area. And it will add some warmth to that cloth. And then we have to blend some gray right up against it. So take the gray and then just tie that in there. And even darken the edge right along the top of the foot or the toe right here. And blend your colors together. And then do the same thing with the other ones. My palette is crazy at this point because we've been mixing and mixing and mixing and I'm going to show you the colors that I want to use for the sunset. So this is cadmium orange mixed with cadmium yellow and I just tied those two together and then this is cadmium yellow with white in it and then this one I mixed some sienna brown, some cadmium yellow and there's probably a hint of purple in that. And then also I have my peach, my light yellow, my white. And then I have a gray that we mixed before, but also I mixed with gray some alizarin crimson and then a hint of blue and then some white. And it made this beautiful purplish red color that we're going to use as part of the sunset as well. So make sure you do that. Also make sure you have your liquid and you want some pure titanium white and then we can get started on that. I actually found a sunset picture online and I just put my iPad out so that I could look at it. But you can follow along with me. A good brush to start with is this Ebony Splendor Bright Creative Mark brush. It's a 383 size 8. And honestly, you don't have to use the same brushes as me, but if you get the similar shape and size, that's all that really matters. And what I want to do, because a lot of the light is coming this direction, I thought that we could start with the white right about here. And I am bringing this up a little bit because I feel like the blue is down too far. And so the lightest spot is going to be right here and I'm going to taper it, have it disappear like this on that side, and then I'll taper it on this side. Okay, and then on either side of that, I want my yellow. And so I'm taking my medium yellow and adding that on the sides, but we also need our light yellow. So to get light yellow, you just mix with your medium yellow, some titanium white. And then what's going to make that stand out is the dark color above and below. I'm going to take that purple color that I told you about and we are going to paint right across here with that color. But right above 
where the light is, you're going to have orange. And I'm swiping my brush every time on the paper towel just so that my colors remain pure. You'll also add that orange down below. And then you can take that yellow and help to blend that orange with the yellow. You see how intense that's getting? That's what I want. I want that intensity. It's very important that you have that yellow in there with the orange. And then above that purple, you can do a pink. You can take your light blue and also add that. I'm doing white over that blue just to blend it in. And I have a darker orange that I just added some reds to. I'm going to use over here and it doesn't hurt to add a couple of lines of that color above here we need more orange you rinse your brush and then you can add a clean blue over here and then titanium white over that. All right, now, this is where it gets really fun. I want you to take your palette knife and I want you to dip it in that orange color and I want you to just take it and just pull across right here. This is going to add some fun texture to the painting and it's also going to make it look more intense. I want to keep that level right in here. But this is going to help a painting to have kind of an abstract element to it. You take that yellow, do a hint of that yellow down in here. I still want to keep things pure right in this area, but over here, that's where you can really get fun with the texture. And you can still use the paintbrush to direct the paint. So I'm leaving a lot of that texture in there, but I'm still kind of swiping with my paintbrush just to get it to where I want to go exactly. And down below, I want you to take light purple and dark purple. You're going to paint down here. Going to lighten underneath with this beautiful salmon color. And I'll show you why. So you want a lot of that salmon color over here. And I'm showing you how to do this side and then you can continue over here. We won't have the intense white, but we are going to carry the yellow across. Take an orange line right here. And then 
down below, this is where it's kind of fun. So you're taking that salmon color and then peach, you'll get even a little bit lighter down here. We're going to take that gray that you have mixed up, the charcoal gray. You can mix a tiny bit of blue with it, like the periwinkle color, you can put some of that in there. And that will lighten it up a little bit. And then we are going to do mountains. <laughs> How fun is that? You can do whatever shapes you want. Get really creative. And then as you go lower, you will fade into basically fog. And so it will go from that gray, then you can do that periwinkle color. And then after that, you can do a light blue. I'll show you what it looks like. I wanted to show you that you can take some black and if you want to on that ridge you can add some pine trees if you desire. beautiful and realistic that looks even though it's abstract art oh my gosh it is so pretty it gives it tons of depth I am so excited about how that turned out it's exactly what I was envisioning so yay win We're going to start the tree branch next and so I added some more paint to my paint palette and what I have here is burnt umber, ivory black, I have some raw sienna and we will be using some of that pale pink and also titanium white and we basically want to create some warmth for that branch or that perch. So yes, my palette is really messy, but we've been having a lot of fun, so that's okay. I hope yours is messy too. Okay, so here's the raw sienna and the burnt umber, and I'm mixing those two together. You can see how that's creating warmth. And then I still have some burnt sienna I want to add that as well. And then swipe your palette knife and then add your pale pink. And see how that warms up that brown, that dark brown. So you have a really nice deep warmth. And with that, I want you to take <laughs> try and find a spot. I'm going to come down here because I know my paint is dry. So if you see a spot where your paint is dry, you can do that as well. And I'm going to mix a little more ivory black. Notice how I wiped that paint off right here. And then I'm going to take 
some titanium white. And look how nice that gray is. I really like that gray. And you can add just a little more white and some orange got in there, but that's okay. Okay, and then we also want a combination of the pale pink and the raw sienna together. Again, there's a little bit of additional color in there. Some yellow got in there, but that's okay. Not a big deal. I want to mix just a teeny tiny bit of burnt umber, not a lot. And then we want a bluish gray. And so I would just take some of your existing color. So I took my periwinkle color, which is the purple mixed with blue. And then I also took my cerulean blue and I'm going to come over here and I want to add white, mix that in with that color. And that gives us a light blue again, a dark shadow color. And so do burnt umber, burnt sienna, and ivory black. And again, find a spot that's dry. That one's not dry. So right here for me. And I will now show you how to get started. For the tree branch, we want to be really dark on this side. I'm going to take my Ebony Splendor 383 size 8 brush and I'm going to dip it in the liquid and then in the darkest color that I mixed, which is the black and the burnt umber. And you want to go right along the side of the branch right here. All the way up to his feet. And the nice thing is the paint is still wet from yesterday. And so I have the advantage of the background blending in with the dark. You can see that it's just naturally blending in along the side. Yay for that. So I wiped my brush off and I'm just going to enhance that a little bit by running my brush up along the side. Continue the dark all the way down. And then right underneath his feet, I also want you to paint with that dark. This is where I want you to take your square brush again, that ebony splendor, and now I want you to dip into the brown color that we mixed. And this is where you get to have a lot of fun. You are doing strokes that look like wood grain, and just by having that liquid on your brush and going up and down, it's really making a nice texture and then I'm also mixing that gray in here and I want a little more black so I'm going to come over here and just pull that up into the color up in this area you don't want it to be too light because you want it to contrast against the sunset obviously so it's a fine balance between the light and the dark. So I am going to extend the dark down right here. You can even have some jagged edges 
So notice how I did some shadows in there and then you can even come down. You can also come over here on this side and do some bold lines that look like heavy shadows as well. And it just gives it that jagged edge approach. You don't want a soft branch. This one looks broken like the tree broke off so it's a little bit rugged. On this side, you can be more gray, and so that's where we will lighten up. I'm going to take titanium white and add a few little highlights on this side and maybe right here. So when we go to add snow, don't have any liquid on your brush currently and get a big glob of titanium white. You will just start globbing away. Now in some parts it might not work as well. Right there it did. You can also use some blue, like over here. And then on the other side of the snow, if you add black, it will make it look like a shadow. You can start the snow up here, which is really pretty over that orange. And you can also do some blue, just a combination of blue and white. You'll see how pretty that looks cascading down.
Okay, and standing back, I actually noticed that it would look really good if I had snow extending over the tree branch onto the sunset. So I added some there, there, and down there. And then I did light it just a little bit right here and again down there. And it really helped to bring the texture of that branch out. So I think we are pretty much done. You can go back over your owl if there's any thin areas of paint. You can add that. Just take your rounded brush. Uh, th this Master's Touch Filbert brush is amazing for that. I'm really happy about how this project turned out. It was definitely fun to do. I love the diversity between the mountains, the sunset, the coloring in the owl, and of course the snow on the branch. So it was definitely one of those that was challenging, but super fun to do. Thank you for sharing this project with me, and I look forward to our next projects together. We'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this project, be sure to like and subscribe for many more fun projects to come.